In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ at St. Paul, my brothers in office, and those of you out in the wide world of YouTube, I bring you greetings from the Board of Directors of Higher Things and from the saints at Grace Lutheran in Grass Valley who wonder why on earth this installation service is in frosty Iowa and not in sunny, balmy California. But that's part of the reason we are here, isn't it? especially in these gray and latter days, days of change, of confusion, of uncertainty, and now war, it doesn't matter where the altar is as much as the fact that there is a physical altar before which God's people may gather to receive the Lord's good and gracious gifts in word and sacrament. That's the point of higher things, after all. We gather youth and young adults together in various places around the country for conferences and retreats and more, but those are brief moments. Home is what's foundational. Home is what counts. A place where you are comfortable, known, safe. We've always said, that the best people to teach the youth of the church are their own pastors at their own altars. NHT's mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults by resourcing those pastors and parents and youth leaders. So it was proper to call you, Pastor Goodman, to serve not only our organization, but also those pastors and parents and youth workers who make use of our resources to help them proclaim Jesus for you to those under their care. Yes, it's odd to call a pastor to not an altar. It happens all the time in our fellowship, of course, seminaries and universities, synodical and district offices, other RSOs. As an organization that is so focused on having a real pastor in front of real people, the position of content executive just seems a bit ephemeral, doesn't it? Certainly, you will have many opportunities to announce the Lord's absolution, to proclaim his word from the pulpit, and to preside at the Lord's altar. But the main focus of your call is something different. Ezekiel proclaims today that the Lord God will seek out his lost sheep, those who need to be gathered together before the Lord for protection and to receive from him what they so desperately need. St. Paul reaffirms Isaiah's promise that God the Father will send proclaimers with the saving gospel to those in need of salvation, to ears that badly need to hear the good news that Jesus is for them. And that is why you've been called. You are a digital missionary of sorts, roaming the information superhighway, proclaiming the peace of Jesus and his salvation to those scattered and lost, to those sheep cowering in the darkness of our broken world, seeking a home. Some of them have a tenuous connection to an altar, but so many don't. Through the gift of technology, we have tools to reach out into that darkness with the light of Christ. Gospel for all, under the cross, reflections, video shorts, there and back again, sermons for you, VBS, retreat in a box, confirmation camp, all of them tools for drawing the hurting out from their hiding places and into safety. And that is your charge, Pastor Goodman, to carry the transfigured light of Jesus Christ and him crucified deep into the corners and the alleys and the basements and the school hallways of this hurting world, that he may be seen amidst the clutter and the challenges of daily life as a beacon for the lost and the hurting and the questioning and the broken and the scattered. 
the risen Jesus, isn't ephemeral, and neither is our faith. The Son of God became man for you and your salvation. He became flesh and tabernacled among us. He lived and breathed upon this earth to carry your sins and the sins of the world to Golgotha. To die there in your place, crushed under the weight of your sin and my sin and all of the sin of all of the world. He poured out his sacrificial blood to cover all of your fears and pain and hurts and unbelief and hate and disappointment and anger. That's why Jesus ascended the altar of his cross. To do what none of us ever could. To satiate God's wrath. To become the one sacrifice that redeemed all of creation from its inexorable spiral into darkness and death. But that sacrifice didn't stay there. Jesus himself said that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in my name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The word is out. The Savior has come. A home has been prepared. Forgiveness is in his outstretched, nail-pierced hands for you. The gospel is for all. So many people who knew better refused to see what was before them on that hideous tree of death, which became the tree of life. They couldn't believe that God the Father would work in such a way to save them. If it wasn't already clear enough through what came before, a Roman spear, wielded by a pagan soldier, preached what so many had closed their ears and eyes to. Blood that quenched God's wrath over sin and water that washed the sinner clean. Can TikTok proclaim Christ crucified for you? We're about to find out. We've already seen how YouTube and Zoom have become indispensable tools. So why not reach further into the less traveled corners of the world, in Christian terms, with that saving word? Those platforms are in no way holy and Christian but they can be used to reveal the Savior just as that Roman spear did. Dear friends in Christ, pray for Pastor Goodman. Pray for everyone he enlists in this work, contributors and editors and congregations. This work isn't for the faint of heart. This is a dangerous journey. It is a deadly fight. My brother under the cross, marshal the forces at your disposal to charge into Armageddon's reach, into the gaping maw of Satan and his hordes, banishing their darkness with the light of Christ. Satan doesn't want the gospel to gain a foothold in territory he's claimed. But we don't care what Satan thinks, do we? The word of the living God has power that not even Satan and his evil mob can overcome. You are the baptized. You have been marked with the blood of the risen Christ. You have been washed clean in the name of the triune God. What can Satan actually do to you? To any of you? Oh, he's going to lie and cheat and deceive all that he can. But don't listen to him. Hear the voice of the living God instead. He will gather his people together and feed them. He will pasture them. They will dwell in safety in the home that he provides. That's you. That's all of you. And that's all of those lost and scattered sheep that are gathered back together by the voice of the good shepherd. Be faithful in your call and your charge, my friend. You've taken it up. But it really isn't up to you, is it? It's up to the Lord. He will use you and all those who join in the fight with you.
The Holy Spirit will move when and where he wills. Speak the word, and the ears that hear will be changed. You and everyone you enlist in this cosmic battle are part of something greater. And that greater is the working of our living and triumphant Lord and God. You may never see the outcome of some of what you do. But the word of the Lord will not return empty and void. It will accomplish that for which it is sent. That word is Jesus. He has already won the victory, victory for you and for all who believe. You might feel like a stranger in a strange land, but you are on the road to the new creation. May the Lord bless your labors in bringing others along on that journey home, the journey where Jesus is for them, where Jesus is for you. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.